Hey guys, uh, Carmine Bufano, and this is a continuation of um, the last video that I made on uploading tur uh, turnkey Linux appliances up to OpenStack Glance. Glance is the image service in OpenStack. So where we left off was um, we created, uploaded, uh, downloaded our appliance, decompressed it, created three files, we uploaded the three files uh, to OpenStack, and now they are available to our tenants. Okay, so uh, in this video what I'm going to do is actually uh, log in as a tenant of the cloud. Okay, all, all tenants are isolated from each other, they can all create uh, different virtual networks, virtual machines that have um, public access and they're all isolated from each other very cool thing and uh, so that's what we're gonna do today okay the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm going to log in as a regular cloud tenant so I'm not an administrator here uh, and I don't have any administrative privileges okay so I uh, am assigned to this project okay turnkey Linux and right now everything is default uh, if we go to see if we have any instances uh, running there is nothing there okay we have no volumes um, now if we go to images we should be able to see images that were made available to us by uh, the cloud administrator or the cloud provider okay and yesterday we uh, this is what we created simple invoices so in this video we're going to deploy a simple invoices uh, appliance okay Another thing I want to show you, this also applies just to generally creating and just setting up your environment uh, from a default. Okay, so uh, what I have here, these are security groups. If And you can think of this as being your own personal firewall uh, that you would have in, let's say, your uh, home router if you need to open ports or um, put some... Uh, restrict access you would do it here okay so these are the default rules by default OpenStack allows um, all egress traffic which means traffic going from your machine out to the internet but blocks all incoming traffic okay so we're gonna uh, in this case add some rules uh, the first one that I want to do is uh, ICMP I don't want to do all, I want to do uh, custom. Okay, so this is, and the direction is going to be coming in from the web. So from the from the web coming to our, into our uh, cl cloud or virtual network. Okay, uh, the one we want to do is type negative one and code negative one. Those are pings. Okay, so ICMP uh, type negative one, code negative one will allow pings uh, from the outside world. Okay, if you wanted to, you could further restrict this and say, I only want to allow pings from this certain network or this specific uh, IP address. This is a demo. I'm not going to worry too much about this because I'm going to delete it right after. So I'm going to allow pings. Now, we're going to be deploying simple invoices, which is a web application. And um, I'm going to make it available on HTTP, which is port 80, and HTTPS, which is port 443. Okay, so we'll just open up those ports. Okay, and I'm going to say HTTP, and I'm going to allow anybody to get to that web application. For uh, web app, if if you were creating a website here that you do want to give access to the entire internet, you would absolutely want this to stay like that. Um, uh, a web application such as simple invoices uh, you most probably would want to restrict that to your offices or your company's uh, public IP address because that's probably not something you want to give access to the to the entire uh, web or anyone on the on the web but for now this is fine for our purposes okay so I'm also going to add HTTPS So basically, this is just uh, poking holes into our firewall, and these are ingress rules that are coming in. Final one I want to do is uh, port 22, which is SSH. 
SSH is how we're going to log into our instance. Uh, this one you really do want to put your what the address that you're coming from to log in because you can uh, this is how we're going to actually log into our instance you do not want to give uh, anyone else access or you do not want to give the free world SSH access to your computer any any instance that you create again for demo purposes I'm just going to leave it as is this is temporary okay uh, next so we we did all our rules here okay and that's really all we need for a working um, uh, web app, web application. Okay, so next, let's go to our network. Uh, we're going to go to network topology. I thought I deleted this. It's kind of odd. Oh. Let me just delete this and we'll start fresh. Okay, so um, default, this is how your network would look. Uh, this is the internet. This is the World Wide Web. Okay, so this will always be in uh, in any project that you create, okay. So, like, uh, like you would have to set up your uh, home home network. We're going to create a router, okay. This is all virtual now, so we'll just name this router one. Alrighty. The next thing we want to do is create a virtual network. And a subnet to go with that virtual network. And we're going to pick a, um, a, a network address for that network. So uh, I'm going to make this 192.168. I'm just going to grab something at random here. Okay. Uh, but this could be anything. This could be 10.00. Okay, and this is in CIDR notation, which means you don't have to put the subnet. Instead, I'm putting the 24, which is uh, going to create a network with 254 addresses from 0 to 254 will be the addresses available on this network. Okay, click next. Uh, allocation pools are optional. I like to use them, especially if you're going to use VPN. Um, you want to set a range of IP addresses that your D that the virtual DHCP server will will hand out. So I'm going to just restrict the DHCP server handing out addresses between a range of 100 and 200. And DNS server, we're going to use Google's DNSs. That's that's it here. So create, and we're going to. You'll see in a second it'll pop up, and there we go. Okay, so we have all our pieces here. Now we need to connect everything together. So I'm going to go to my router. Okay, and you can you can create as many routers and as many virtual networks as you want here. And uh, and connect them however you'd like. So it's very OpenStack um, offers a lot of flexibility when it comes to virtual networking. What I'm doing here is I'm connecting the router uh, to the internet. Okay, so this is our external side. So this is the WAN side of the router. You can always see what you did. Uh, you can see a graphical representation of it by just clicking on network topology so we can see that we connected our router to the internet what we want to do now is connect our internal network to the LAN side of the router so I'm going to say uh, add interface to this router and I'm going to select the subnet we just created which was VNet1 and you can see the subnet address add interface okay that's done come back here and you can see that we are uh, connected and all set to go Okay, so the, the next thing we're going to do now is actually deploy um, the web application, simple, uh, simple invoices that we created yesterday. All right, so I'm going to say launch instance. We're going to give our instance a name. OpenStack is very cool at, in that when it launches the instance, it's going to inject whatever you put here and set the host name of that instance to this. So we're going to just say simple invoices or whatever makes sense in your situation now we're gonna pick the the size of our machine 
Um, so micro is pretty tiny. You have no disk, 64 megabytes of RAM. We need something a little bit bigger. Uh, I'm going to pick small. This is going to give us one virtual uh, processor, a 20 gigabyte hard drive, and two gigs of RAM, which is more than enough for what we need here. Uh, now we're going to select the image that we uploaded yesterday, which was simple invoices. Okay. Access and security. I already uploaded a uh, encrypted key, so that's why it's available here. By default, uh, you won't have one. You'll have to either create or import one, which is relatively easy. Um, and I, there, you can Google it. it there's uh, many videos on how to do that, and it's extremely simple. Networking, we only created one network, so it'll pre-populate this for you. If you had several networks, it would not. Um, it would be. It would look like this, and then this list would go down to whatever, how many networks you created, and then you can select however uh, virtual network cards you want to put into your virtual computer. Uh, we only have one, so uh, NIC1 is going to be VNet1. Okay, and we can leave everything else here as default and just launch. Okay, so now it's uh, going to create our, our virtual machine. All right, it's going to connect it to our virtual network. Soon you'll see an IP address pop up here, and we can look at network topology. And there's our uh, <coughs> excuse me. We have our virtual machine that's being built. Okay, and this is the address. You can, as you can see, it's, it's within the range that we set uh, between 100 and 200. All right. So what we just need to do right now is just uh, wait till this finishes, and this will go from yellow to white, just like it just did, and it's running. Okay, our virtual machine is running. Our web application is deployed. Okay, uh, we go to the console and have a look. The first time it boots, it takes uh, a little bit longer because it has to. It's going to run startup scripts uh, to inject the SSH key that uh, that I have available, so that way I can log into it securely, and uh, it's setting the host name and all that other good stuff. If this takes too long, it'll generally takes about a minute or two. Uh, but if it doesn't come up soon, what I'll do is I'll pause this and I'll just uh, come back as soon as it comes up. And then I'll, we're going to log into the instance and I'll show you how to set up a turnkey uh, Linux appliance. <coughs> Right, I'm going to pause this, and as soon as this comes to the prompt, I will unpause and we'll be back in a second. Okay, great. We're back. Um, as you can see, OpenStack set the host name of the machine as simple invoices. All right, and uh, now we have we have a problem here. We have a virtual network that is not publicly routable. If you put 192.168.57.100 in your browser or your SSH client, you're not going anywhere um, because it's not a public, pub, publicly routed IP address. So what we're going to do is uh, associate a floating IP. So what we have is a pool of publicly routable public IP addresses, okay, and um, I'm going to allocate one. There's already one allocated. I'll show you how if you wanted to allocate a new one, you would just hit the plus sign and allocate IP. So now this is uh, pulling in a public IP address and making it available to you. So this is our publicly publicly routable IP address, and we're going to associate it to our internal private IP address. Uh, what what's happening behind the scenes here is something called SNAT. Um, I'm sure you've heard of NAT, which is Network Address Translation. SNAT is one step further. It's a static network address translation. So what, that, what does that mean? It means that there's a direct correlation between this publicly routable IP address and this internal private IP address. Any traffic that goes uh, to this address will be um, 
invisibly routed directly to this address. So it'll be completely transparent to the outside. You, anybody who goes to this address, it'll look like it's that address, but really what's happening is that OpenStack is securely uh, sending that data to this internal IP address. And in between here, all the rules that we set up here, the fire, uh, firewall and uh, firewall and access rules uh, will be applied. So if you, whatever ports are closed, it'll block that traffic. Whatever ports are open, it'll allow that traffic. Okay, so we're just gonna simply say associate. Okay, and now we are able to access our instance. Okay, if we now, with any turnkey Linux, I'm gonna go to this address, okay? Once we go there, we're gonna see that we have to set it up. Okay. Um, so this may not even work until it's set up. So really what the, fir the first thing that we want to do is uh, op open up your favorite SSH client, PuTTY in my case, okay? And I'm going to load my encrypted key uh, and I'm going to change to this address right here, okay? Um, we're gonna click open. A security alert is gonna pop up. You're gonna say yes, okay? And I'm gonna log in as root. And now the turnkey Linux configuration pops up, which is very simple. And all you really need to do is just enter the passwords that you want. So we're going to create a password for our root account. It'll ask you to confirm. Um, now it's asking you for the password for the database. MySQL in this case. Confirm. The admin account, and confirm. Okay, and uh, your email address. This is actually important. Uh, I believe Simple Invoices uses your email uh, to log in. So this is what we're going to use to log in. Okay, apply. Uh, if you have, if you if you joined the Turnkey Linux, um, if you registered, uh, you can use their API, and uh, I believe for a small fee you can back up to their servers. But we're going to skip this in this case since we don't have. Uh, and I'm going to say yes, install security updates uh, every day automatically. So I'm going to just select install. It's going to do that right now. Once it's done. We're going to get a blue screen and it's going to say that all the services are ready. Okay, this is the screen. Okay, uh, but what really, ha what I've seen happen that these services actually are not. We need to reboot it. So this is what I was talking about before. If we go to that public IP address, it'll, it'll ask you to initialize your, your, your login. All right, and we did that. Now if I refresh, it's refreshing right now. It's going to still show this. Okay. So what I found that uh, needs to be done, see we still are not at the web application, it's still at this page. So uh, we're going to quit, which closes out this box. We're logging out of PuTTY and we're going to log back in. I'm kind of impatient so instead of waiting I'm just going to open up another PuTTY window. I'm going to log in as root. Logging into the same appliance. Okay, you can see simple invoices. Now, another cool thing that I want to show you is if you list um, the IP address of the virtual machine, you can see that it's not the public IP address. It's not the publicly routable one. It it is in fact uh, the 192.168.57.100. That that uh, the DHT per server gave to it, okay? Um, so that's where the snap comes in. It transparently uh, directs all traffic from this public IP to this internal IP. So we're just gonna give the reboot command, all right? And if we, we got disconnected, which we knew was gonna happen since we rebooted our machine, we can watch it reboot if we go to the console 
and now this happens rather quickly so you're gonna see that in just a second we'll get to the command prompt as soon as that comes up okay so as soon as that comes up if we refresh this now we can see that our uh, simple invoices web application has been deployed it's really that simple okay so I'm gonna log in and it asks for your email and now you just use the password you used when you when we just set up our instance we're gonna log in okay and uh, here it is this is our web application that we downloaded from uh, turnkey Linux all right and you would just set this up uh, add new biller add new customer all right I'm not really gonna get into this this is just to show you how to deploy an instance on here but uh, that's it now if uh, you wanted to you can uh, buy a URL uh, whatever you know you go to GoDaddy or Network Associates for $1.99 I think or or less than ten dollars you can buy uh, whatever URL.com and then you would just go into settings set the IP address of that URL to this and then instead of typing in uh, an IP address you would type in you know your URL address and it will take you there to the same IP address all right uh, that's about it I hope you enjoyed and I hope this helped somebody so till next time have a great day